So you're a photographer and you're thinking about buying the new M1 Mac mini, but you're not sure how well Lightroom will work on the new machine because Lightroom as of this video is not optimized for the new M1 chip, but you're in luck because in this video, we're gonna check out how Lightroom performs on the N1 Mac mini when you're dealing with photos, dealing with raw photos from both Canon and from Sony. So stick around because we're about to get into it right now. All right, now we're at my computer and we're going to start editing. First thing I'm gonna do is launch Lightroom. Lightroom Classic, hold on, let me close mail, make sure nothing else is running in the background. We gotta make this as fair as possible. And uh, I think we're gonna start editing with the Canon photos first. Now, as you can see, launch room, I mean, uh, Lightroom launched fairly quickly. So I'm gonna go over here to file, import photos. Now I have five Canon photos and five Sony photos. So we're gonna do those. Uh, I'll go to here and they're on my desktop. So Kenneth desktop. And just to show you that it populates, I guess not the fastest, but it, it's okay. It's not the slowest either. Hmm, it's actually not very fast at all. But let's go over, oh, cause there's videos and stuff and they're mixed up. All right, let's go over to Canon photos. All right, boom, so that populated fairly quick and Sony populated fairly quick. So we're just gonna do these five photos, bring them into Lightroom. So these are Canon raw photos. So they're in Lightroom, we're on the M1 Mac mini. Let's see how we do. We're gonna go over to develop and uh, first, this is a photo of me, obviously. I was at my buddy um, Steven's uh, studio. We were messing around, taking photos of each other because we're both photographers, so we're never really in front of the camera. But we made sure to make some time to go in front of the camera today, or well, that day. So this is me. I'm just gonna mess with the exposure. See that? Contrast. Okay, no beach balls or anything. Mess with the texture. This is normally how I will not edit, but I just wanted to show you a little bit of the power here now a little bit of uh maybe some color grading put that over there some shadows whatever all right so it's doing all right with the canon photos i'm just going to reset everything but let's see how it does with the presets now we're going to go over to here maybe do one of these holiday cool and you can see that it's actually doing a really good job with preloading it in the preview it's not sluggish at all it's not super like crazy. It's not taking super long. I actually like this mint deep preset. That actually kind of looks good. Now let me zoom in a little bit. Uh, it's not ketchup. That's just a highlight marker. You can see on my face. Let's do some healing. All right, let's 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 uh let's heal my face a little bit. So let's click on this. Let me get rid of that right there. Okay, push that up. I have a little dot right here from shaving. Okay, push that up a little bit, that's fine. Um, maybe I don't want this uh, birthmark right there, that's gone. Okay, good, hit done. And uh, this photo, I guess, is ready to go. As, as much as it is or is not, this photo is fine. It did really well with that. I'm just gonna go over here, I'll hit, uh, this photo, hit it with the mint rich. I guess we're going with this green theme. Go over to this photo. It loads pretty fast. Go with the rustic deep. I don't know how that looks. Okay, rustic deep. And then go over to uh, this photo. Now it's not loading like super fast, but it's not loading super slow either. So let's try this, uh, this bright cool. I'm really liking this green for some reason. And then we're to go over here and uh, do one of these with the, let's say, a, ooh, that one looks kind of nice. We'll do this LM Cozy Holiday Bright. All right, so we have our five Canon photos edited, um, whatever they are, but they're edited. You saw how it performs uh, on the M1 chip. Now let's do what we need to do and export these bad boys. So I have all five highlighted. Go over to File, Export, and then we're gonna export these to uh, the desktop and Canon photos is fine. And then, um, let's see. Image quality 72, resize. We're not gonna resize them. We're not gonna sharpen for screen. We're not gonna do any of that. Five photos. I'm gonna grab my stopwatch and we are going to see how long this takes. So reset and then one, two, three. Export. Okay. 
So we have this going. I don't know if you can see that, but that's going right there. And it is exporting up there. It's getting those five files ready. And nothing yet. Not, oh, wow. That was like a big boost. And then it's still going, still going. Full resolution. And I think it's done. I'm gonna wait till it's like done, done until I press stop and boom. Okay, so it took uh, 29 seconds to get those five Canon photos exported full resolution. Nothing crazy, really. Let's just check them real quick. Canon photos, where are they? Oh, these must be it, yeah, today. Let's just go to date modified, check them out. Boom, 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 boom. All right, sweet. So now we did Canon, okay? Canon is done. So what I'm gonna do now is I am actually going to close Lightroom, all right? We're starting this from the beginning again. Yes, I want to quit Lightroom. Uh, skip this time. Oh, man, I'm gonna hear that in the comments. Just skip. Uh, nothing else is open except QuickTime is recording this, so keep that in mind as well. So we're gonna launch Lightroom. Launch, launch, launch. And now we are working with Sony RAW, okay? Just in case you photographer shoot Sony. Um, if you shoot Nikon or maybe Fuji, I'm really sorry, but this video is <laughs> not gonna help you much, but you can just kind of get, kind of guess, you know, how it's gonna perform. So again, we're gonna go to File, we're gonna go to Import Photos and Video. We are going to go to, uh, I still can't, okay. all right, Sony. We're gonna get these five photos. Now, this is my buddy, Steven. He's like one of New York's biggest fashion photographers, incredibly talented, super sweet guy, amazing person. Um, Really, really great dude. All right, so we have the Sony photos raw in uh, imported. We're gonna mess with the exposure. I'm not seeing any lag, no nothing. Not really worried, we do blacks, do the whites. Go down here, adjust the shadow. I mean, do this, some blending here, blah, blah, blah. Maybe some masking. All right, do some masking there, some sharpening there, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so works really well with the Sony RAW. We're gonna reset. Now, let's see how we do with the presets. So I'm gonna throw this uh, mint film preset on there. Now, if you notice, this is something that I noticed uh, before this video, uh, when I was shooting, uh, what was it? Uh, baby shower. For the Sony RAW photos, every time I add a preset, you'll notice in the preview, it looks fine. And once I apply it, it looks fine. But once I pull away, there's this pink hue. And I'm not sure why it does that with the Sony RAW, because you saw it doesn't do it with the uh, Canon. But then all I have to do is double click this, and it goes away. So I'm not really sure what the deal is with that. That could be a bug because of the M1 chip. It could be just a bug with the Sony RAW, but I deal with that every time I edit Sony photos. So we're gonna check another Sony RAW photo. Here it is of him. Now these, we were just messing around again. Let's give him this uh, extra. I mean, this is too, this is like a little blown out, but I'm gonna do that and I'll pull away. It'll turn pink. Then I have to double click this and I'll go back to regular. So I don't know what the deal is with that. You guys, if you have any idea, let me know in the comments, but we're just looking at the workflow right now. This is working. This is applying fairly quickly, other than the pink hue, which I have to go and fix right there. And then go to this one. I don't know what we're gonna give them on this one. Let's do, um, let's see, what do we like? Let's do this one, home bright. It's gonna turn pink, which is really annoying but whatever, I don't know why it's doing that, but it does that. And then we're gonna go over here, cucumber fade, hit him with that. And then he'll turn pink, go over here, double click, that's off. Now, normally when I edit photos, like a portrait photo especially, and there's eyes in it, I will always zoom in. And you can see it, the M1 chip is doing fine. I mean, I'm not getting slowed at all. Um, and I will brighten up the eyes just a little bit. I'll put it underneath like this, just like that, boom. Then I'll go over to this one and I'll go just like that, boom. And then what I'll do is I'll set the exposure a little bit. This brush, this thing needs to be like a little softer or whatever. I'm not sure what the word is, it needs to flow. Uh, whatever, it doesn't matter. We're not using this photo anyway, but I'll use a little bit of lightning in his eye, lighting in his eyes just to make him pop and he looks great. Okay, so 
this is all done with the Sony photos. We have them all edited. And now it's time to export these bad boys. So again, just like we did with the Canon ones, we're gonna file and then we're gonna go to export and then choose photo location pretty much. And we're gonna go to Sony, hit choose. And then blah, 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 everything's good. JPEG quality 72, that's usually what I do. I'm not gonna put sharpen or anything. And then I'm gonna start my stopwatch again. So we had 29 for the Canon. Now let's see what we get for the Sony. I'm gonna hit export and let's see what we get right here. So it is exporting these five Sony raw photos and um, see if it could beat 29 seconds. That's a big chunk it does right at the beginning. That's kind of, whoa. Um, I think I might have beat it. 21 seconds, which is, uh, I don't know what to think of that. I guess it could deal with the Sony's faster or maybe it just warmed up or I don't know because I don't know. I honestly don't know. But 21 seconds for five photos edited full, full, uh, the big guys were not like, making these small by any means. And they all are right there. And these are large. Let me see, get info. These are do, 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 do 4,000 by 6,000. So they're not, they're not small at all. So you can see right there, the power of the M1 chip on the M1 Mac mini again, I mean, I don't know if I said this before, but this is the base model. This is eight gigs of RAM, 256 gigs of storage, and it performs really well. So if you're a photographer, you're on the fence about it, and you're not sure if this is for you, I'm confident in this machine. I am. I am confident in this machine. I think that it can do what I need it to do, and I think it does it well. So if this video helped you at all, or maybe it just created a bunch of questions, please let me know. Um, again, if you're shooting with Nikon, if you're shooting with um, Fuji, I hope this can help you wrap your mind about how to work for your RAWs and your codecs and stuff like that, whatever. But if you're shooting with Sony, you're good. I think that little pink hue thing is a, my issue. I don't know if it's everyone's issue. I didn't see it online or anywhere else. Um, if you're shooting with Canon, you're golden. It, it works. The M1 Mac Mini works. And for $699, $649, or even $599 at Costco, I saw it for $599 at Costco, the M1 Mac Mini does a phenomenal job. So that's the end of this video. I just wanted to show you guys uh, how this performs because I know there's a lot of people, and me and Steve are talking about it, there's a lot of people who don't think the M1 can stack up and it'll ruin their workflow and they'll just have a really expensive paperweight but that's not the case. The M1 Mac Mini does great with Lightroom, does great with photos, does great with RAW. It does it well. You didn't see any beach balls, any real lag when it came to color correcting, changing exposure, blah, blah, sharpening, adding the exposure, nothing. Exporting was a breeze. I mean, it's five photos. Maybe you usually deliver 50 or 100 photos. I could get it, but like, it was seconds. It was seconds. It was, it was really fast. So, um... That's the end of this video. Let me know what you think. I am Ken, the content coach. If you like this video, please leave a like. If you loved it, please subscribe and uh, hit that bell notification icon so you don't miss any more videos. I am pumping out one video a week. Let me know if, what you think of the new set. I have a new set here that I made. I got rid of my desk. I made a behind the scenes video that I could show you if you'd like. Um, but the M1 Mac Mini, it works well with Lightroom. And, my, and keep in mind, Lightroom is not optimized for the M1 chip. So as soon as Adobe optimizes Lightroom for the M1 chip, it's only gonna get faster. It's only gonna get better. So I am super excited that it's performing this well at this early in the game. So um, let me know what you think. Was it fast enough? Was it good enough? Was this video all right? Ah, I'm, I'm excited about this. This is great. I, I'm really, I'm really glad I picked it up. So I'll see you, I'll see you next time. Now uh, I'm Ken, the content coach. Go out and make something. Bye-bye. I'll see you.